Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a short lecture uh, of the cultivation of field beans. My name is Nils Christiansen, and I'm the international product manager for Pulses at one of the Saaten Union shareholder, Norddeutsche Pflanzenzucht, NPZ, in the north of Germany. So, last year I was the first time in my life in the Baltic States, and I spent a great week in all of the three countries, met some very nice people, had some good food and saw some really great looking crops. But uh, due to the uh, field beans, I saw some differences in the way of cultivation, in the way of fertilization of the field beans uh, compared to the lecture I know, the trials I know um, from before. In the next minutes, I would like to introduce you in an advanced economic fertilization of field beans by saving inputs and increased usage of natural productivity. The field beans uh, or the Baltic states are a very important area for the field beans. Uh, last year, you grow more than 90,000 hectares of this crop in all of the three uh, countries together. And of course, compared to an oilseed drape or to a weed, uh, it's still a niche crop. But with the changing um, society opinion and with the uh, changing um, political directions uh, in the way of agriculture and um, in the import of protein plants and uh, protein food uh, from countries outside the European Union, um, the opinion for field beans uh, improved uh, during the last years and also the area uh, increased in the last years. And I'm very confident this will um, also happen in future, that we have an increasing uh, area. So the field bean, um, together with other crops like peas or lupins, are a very unique, are a very uh, special crop. Because uh, the pulses in general and, um, and the field bean uh, especially uh, can produce their own nitrogen by a symbiosis uh, with plant-specific bacteria. This was uh, discovered uh, already uh, many years ago in 1986 by the German uh, agricultural chemist uh, Hermann Hellriegel, who discovered that, um, or who discovered the conversion of the elementary nitrogen we have in our air um, by about 78% um, to the biological ammonia, which can be used then by the plant. This, like I said, this symbiosis is very uh, specific between uh, one crop and one kind of bacteria. And uh, now with the um, increasing of organic agriculture um, and increasing of, uh, also in the price of, nit of nitrogen, um, also the importance of field beans and of pulses in general grew during the last years and um, will also increase during the next years. Well, what do we need uh, for a effective prediction of for nitrogen fixation? So, first of all, it is uh, the variety. Um, we will see it later again, but with a higher uh, grain yield, we can also higher, uh, produce a higher uh, nitrogen in the soil. The second and very important point is the concentration of nitrate and ammonium in the soil. The more nitrate, the more ammonium, so let's say the more uh, nitrogen is already in the soil, the less effective is the production of nitrogen by the plant itself. Next um, point is the plant development. A very young germ is not able to produce so a high amount of uh, nitrogen, but in the young stage, um, the bacteria from around in the soil 
uh, go into this, uh, go into the root and um, have their habitat in the root. And uh, last but not least, uh, the growing conditions also a very important facts. Um, the growing conditions means the supply of water um, uh, is the temperature in the air, the air temperature, the, the soil temperature. Uh, it is uh, the aeration in the soil, um, so we don't uh, need to have any compaction in the soil uh, to have a very, or the, the best, um, or the most effective nitrogen production. Some uh, trials in Lithuania uh, a few years ago have shown uh, or compared three different fertilization variants. One was no fertilization with any fertilizer, with any nutrient. Another was the fertilization uh, without nitrogen, but with uh, phosphate and potassium. And the last, the third uh, variant was uh, the fertilization with nitrogen, with potassium and with phosphate. And the results for Vizia Faba for the uh, field bean shows very clear that um, the fertilization of, uh, with phosphate and potassium, but with no nitrogen, produces the highest uh, yield, the significant highest yield in this comparison, with more than 30% uh, uh, higher grain yield. When we have a look on the cost side, then we can see very clear um, that with the, um, with the commodity price of about uh, currently 300 euros per ton, we have, of course, the highest turnover uh, with the highest grain yield and minus um, the, uh, minus, uh, the, the, uh, the fertilization or the fertilizer costs, we still have the highest value in the variant of uh, fertilization with phosphate and potassium, but with no nitrogen. Also, the next slide and uh, further um, results show um, the, the influence of the, um, of the productivity. So here we have again this uh, three variants. Um, no fertilization, fertilization uh, with a P and K, and uh, fertilization was with all three uh, nutrients, uh, nitrogen, phosphate and potassium. And here we have um, the uh, amount of nitrogen per kilogram grain. This is the highest in the second variant without nitrogen. And here um, it shows very clear that we have here yeah, the highest amount. And um, because the nitrogen is the most important um, nutrient in the amino acids, this shows or this results um, in the fact that with the second variant we have uh, the highest protein content as well. With the highest grain yield, we have in general and total uh, the highest nitrogen accumulation than in the second variant with uh, by fertilization without nitrogen. That means at the end the value of nitrogen minus um, the value we gave to the soil uh, in form of uh, fertilizer, the highest value we have in uh, in the second variant, so the fertilization with uh, P and K, but with no N, so no nitrogen. That means we don't have only a yield above the soil in form of grain and protein. We also have a yield, a monetary yield, uh, under the surface in form of nitrogen, which you uh, know very well uh, increases or it has, has a very high price increase during the last two years. So um, to 
fava bean itself, the pulse, has a high value on all levels. Yeah, now the question, but how much does uh, a field bean need in, in general for fertilization of uh, for, uh, phosphate and potash? So it's very difficult uh, to say um, because it depends, like I said, on the growing conditions, on variety, on different um, conditions we have not always an influence on. But in general, uh, we can't say for, uh, for um, or the plant has a nutrient requirement by a yield of five tons um, of about 75 kilos of phosphate, 200 kilos of uh, potash and uh, 25 kilos of magnesium. This magnesium mainly or often comes with a potash fertilizer, so this doesn't play any role. Also a sulfur, um, but for calcium, uh, for potash and for phosphate, we need to be clear how much we need. And for this, we have to uh, test and have to analyze our soil regularly that we um, have year by year, then a direction how much or what is the amount of nutrients in my soil and how much do I need to fertilize? How much do I need to invest, of course, into this crop? Summarize this, so what do, do, what do we need? Uh, what are the measures for the economic uh, fertilization of the field beans, especially in, uh, in the case of nitrogen? It is, first of all, the variety. We just have seen the higher um, the, the grain yield is, or the grain yield potential, the higher is also the potential of uh, nitrogen productivity. With our varieties, we, have, we, we provide the agriculture and the Baltic states a very uh, efficient and high yielding crops and high yielding varieties. And second, um, I already said it, uh, it's a nitrogen content as low as possible in the soil to have the full efficiency of nitrogen productivity for the crop itself, for the bean itself, but also for the following uh, crop, the uh, winter cereal, for example. Then uh, we have the adapt supply, I said it, uh, of phosphate and calcium and uh, to, to have um, a good habitat for uh, all our bacteria who live in the root, who produce this nitrogen. Uh, we need to have a pH value of six to seven. So that means I need to uh, analyze my soil to know what the pH value is. I need to lime also to give lime regularly uh, into my soil to control the acid status. I need to have a good aeration uh, without any compaction that the nit gas nitrogen, uh, the elementary nitrogen can flow easily to the root. And I need to have an adjustment of crop rotation. Um, I need to have a pre-crop for the beans, which uh, pulls all the, um, all the nitrogen out. And as an intercrop between cereal and the year before and the fava bean, they shouldn't have any uh, pulses included. So, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for your interest. We, as Sarton Union, uh, we are happy to provide you with high yielding crops, high yielding varieties in the crop uh, fava bean, and we will do it also in future. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.